the best way to not win basketball games is to trade your entire future for Rudy Gobert. And that is exactly what the Timberwolves did in a trade that it's it makes less and less sense to me the more the days go on. It's not even just the players, right? Malik Beasley, Walker Kessler, Jared Vanderbilt, Patrick Beverly, and Leandro Balmero. Now, a couple of those guys were depth pieces. Jared Vanderbilt played a lot. Malik Beasley played a lot. Patrick Beverly played a lot. Walker Kessler, a rookie. You obviously don't know what you're going to get. And then Balmaro, I don't know that anybody is ever expecting anything out of him. So not only are you trading some role players that you're actually going to need if you want to make this like a top four team, which is the idea that the Timberwolves have when you get Rudy Gobert, because now you're looking at a starting five of like Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, D'Angelo Russell, and who, I'm forgetting who else, so forgive me, but you're looking at having a, a quote-unquote big four, essentially. The problem is now you're not going to have any that. When you had, if you could have kept some of those players and only given up the picks, I guess the trade looks a little bit better because if one of those guys goes out or when they have foul trouble or even when the second unit comes in, you're still feeling pretty good about your team but not only did they give up their debt pieces they gave up unprotected first round picks in 2023 2025 2027 and then a top five protected first round pick in 2029 my biggest problem with this trade is that the timberwolves they made it too early you only get one swing at a trade like this you saw drew holiday Get, get traded for a whole bunch of stuff, went to the Bucks, got the Bucks a championship. You saw Anthony Davis get traded to the Pelicans. The Pelicans gave up a whole bunch. And then the Lakers, LeBron, Anthony Davis, they won a championship with them. So we've seen those trades work out fairly recently. The problem was what you were adding Anthony Davis to, what you were adding Drew Holiday to was, Yana, was LeBron James and was Giannis Adetokounmpo. And as much as I think Anthony Edwards is a really good player, Anthony Edwards is not that yet. Anthony Edwards is not ready to be the lead guy on the championship team. He is a guy that's 20 years old. And I, Giannis was probably 24 or 25 when they brought in Drew to town. And Giannis was a guy who had already won, I think, two MVPs by that point. And LeBron James, we know when they brought Anthony Davis, already NBA champion, already MVP, like all of that. It makes all the sense in the world. Anthony Davis, again, man, he's not ready. If you wanted to make this trade, like with Anthony Davis in mind, because that's what you're thinking, right? You're like, we have Anthony Davis, we have Carl Anthony Towns, we want to add another piece. I respect that thinking. I would have waited until Anthony Davis, or I'm sorry, until Anthony Edwards had proven at least something in the playoffs. You're right. Maybe he had won a round. Maybe him and Towns had won a round in the playoffs. They'd won two rounds. They made an unexpected Western Conference Finals run and then got swept off their feet. Jokic did with the Nuggets, or even like Dame has done in Portland a couple times, where it bounces, they get some playoff success, and then you add a big piece. This is not the case with the Minnesota Timberwolves. And that's why I think it's a mistake, because you don't know if Anthony Edwards is that good yet. You think he is, but he's certainly not ready yet. So if I'm the Wolves, I would have waited until Ant was 23, 24 to make a trade like this. And then I would have used those first-round picks that you gave up to add to Carl Anthony Towns, to add to Anthony Edwards, and hope you hit on one of them, and then you have another solid role player, and then a guy becomes available. And it's not going to be Rudy Gobert in three years from now. You're not trading for 33-year-old Rudy Gobert. But it would be another player of that caliber, another big star who's unhappy, who now you can bring in, and it's a much more attractive situation where you can say, hey, look, we have Anthony Edwards, who has the potential to be like a top five player in the NBA. He's not that yet. I don't think he's going to get there in the next one or two years, but maybe three, four, five years down the line, Anthony Edwards is ready to be right there. He's ready to ascend, be an MVP, be all these things that 
kind of justify and have the different like ingredients or have the resume of a guy that is usually the best player on an NBA championship, which is what you hope Anthony Edwards is going to be. And that's why you bring in a guy like Rudy Gobert and then make a move like that and mortgage your future because you want to get a title. You want to have like a four year window where you can really win an NBA championship. And to me, the Timberwolves went and they swung way too early. You know, Rudy Gobert is 30, and he is under contract until 2026, and his contract numbers are very ugly. He makes $38 million this next year, $41 million in 2024, $44 million in 2025, and then $46.6 million in 2026. He has a player option after 2025 to opt into that $46.6 million, and at that point he's going to be, what, 35 years old? He's absolutely opting in. There's no no scenario in the entire universe that Rudy Gobert walks away from essentially $50 million at age 35. And that's going to handicap you because you have – now you're not going to be able to make any of these moves that you need to make to get these guys together because I don't think a big three of Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, and Rudy Gobert – is going to be enough to win you a title. And Towns is already on a Supermax contract. He just signed one. So you have Towns under contract for six years at $283 million. And then Aunt Edwards' rookie extension, or rookie max extension that they're certainly going to give him, is due pretty soon. So now you're going to have these three guys who are taking up probably essentially all your cap space, right? If you look at the Lakers, it's – Pretty similar to what's happening with like Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, and LeBron James. Not quite on that level because Anthony Edwards can't make as much as those guys. But it's pretty close to the situation. And you have, and you're seeing the trouble that the Lakers are having of grabbing free agents. They can only offer these guys the mid level exception or the vet minimum. And they don't, they just don't have any kept flexibility cap flexibility because these three players all make so much the problem with that is they're going to be modeled after this current old garbage lakers team and they're going to be doing it without the championship that the lakers won because instead of having lebron and anthony davis you're going to be hitching your wagon to Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, and Rudy Gobert. So you're not going to be able to sign anybody because you're not going to have the money to throw around, and you're not going to be able to add talent through the draft. And these contracts, while I don't ever want to say a contract is untradeable because we've seen it, if I'll be shocked beyond belief if somebody trades for Rudy Gobert making $44 million in 2025 right? Because the the Wolves are still not going to have their picks to attach to somebody to say, hey, here are these picks. Please take on this horrible Rudy Gobert contract that we have because they just gave all their picks away, which is exactly what the Lakers did with Anthony Davis, which is why now the Lakers can't even offer you a first-round pick until 2027, which is why they're probably going to end up being stuck with Russell Westbrook. Or and you could always just buy him out, but then you're, you're eating that money anyway if the player doesn't want to take any less of a salary. So, in my opinion, the Wolves are going to be unbelievably handicapped by the Rudy Gobert trade that they just made, and it's not going to bear out anything. They have they have a nice-looking starting five. They don't have depth behind it. And is it a starting five that you still think is going to be, like, top five in the West? You know, you're going to have the Clippers. If they're fully healthy, the Clippers should be better. The Warriors should be better. They think the Grizzlies will probably be better. And then you're looking at all these other teams, right? The Blazers are still looking at making some moves. And I think the Wolves will probably be a little bit better than the Blazers would be my guess. But the Nuggets are going to have Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray coming back. And they still have Jokic, obviously. We talked about the Phoenix Suns a little bit with the Kevin Durant trade. And while Chris Paul is super old right now, He probably still has a little bit of juice left in him. And Phoenix is a team that has the different role players. They're going to lose DeAndre Ayton. My guess is they're going to get something back for him. But if you're the Wolves, I don't know that this leaps you definitively above anybody in the Western Conference that you weren't already better than. You're probably better than Utah now because they gave up Rudy Gobert. And I don't know if they're giving up Donovan Mitchell or what have you, but you're probably going to be better than the Jazz who you were worse than last year. 
but is that it? Are you better than anybody else in the West that you weren't already better than? Does this make you a top four team in the West? I don't think so. And I really like Anthony Edwards, and I really like Carl Anthony Towns. Not a big fan of Rudy Gobert. I just think it's way too early for the Wolves, man. I just think it's it's insanely early for them to make a move like this. I understand wanting to max out the time that you have with Anthony Edwards. In my opinion, you got to catch him in his prime. You don't catch him right now where he's on, and no, he's still ascending to get into his prime. And by the time he hits his prime, you're not going to be able to do anything with Rudy Gobert because he's going to be 33, 34, 35, making anywhere between 41 and like $47 million. And you're just not going to be able to to build a team around that. That's why I don't like this trade for the Wolves. Love it for the Jazz. You got the Wolves' entire future. and while for 2025, I don't think that pick is going to be high at all, right? Or 2023, because it was 23, 25, 27, and 29. For 2023 and 2025, you're probably looking at a team in the playoff pick. But then in 2027, no idea. By that time, Gobert's off the books. And honestly, even in 2025, the only year that the Wolves really have guaranteed, in my mind, is going to be 2023, that you're not looking at like a top 20 pick. 20 Again, 2025, yeah, the Wolves are probably still going to be a, a pretty good team. But 27 and 29, the Wolves might bottom out. And by the time 29 comes around, I would honestly almost bet the Wolves are bottoming out to try and get in that top five so they can retain that pick. I'm a kid and you know I be on the way. Yeah.